Doodle bud here. The holiday season is upon us. We got Thanksgiving in the States with Black Friday. Then we got Christmas coming up. All sorts of sales, all sorts of pens. Maybe you're looking for yourself, someone else, or putting one on the Christmas list. How do you choose what's a good pen? You don't want to pick one out, wait for it, have it arrive, and be disappointed. So I'm going to go through a few tips. Some of the things I look for when I'm looking online or in person, up close and personal, what makes a pen a good one and what are some things to watch out for? The way I look at pens, I break it into a few different categories. There's many things that impact the quality and long-term outcome of a pen. So we're going to talk about materials. So obviously most common are metals or plastics. We're going to talk about different cap types. You got snap caps, right? And you also got uh, threaded caps. You also have different materials being mixed together. So sometimes you have uh, plastic and metal going together. There's things to think about with that as well. And then also the finish of pens. So sometimes they have coatings, whether it's an anodized coating or painted, and then just the overall fitment. Some things to be aware of, how to look up close, do your best to spot from the pictures when you're shopping online or in person if you're fortunate enough to have a store nearby. So I'm going to try to explain some of the things I look to you from, I guess, an engineering perspective on what makes good pens. First up, we're going to talk about metal pens, then we'll do plastic. So the most common metal I find typically use is aluminum on a lot of these pens, and it usually comes in two formats, whether it's unfinished raw or some type of anodized. There's also titanium. This pen was raw finished when I got it and then I did a at home anodized. So that was kind of cool. The other ones are going to be pens that you can't anodize. So that uh, it's not going to be aluminum or titanium. So maybe they will be brass or something like that or steel or mix. And then they'll actually paint it. They'll put some paint on there. So I'll go over some things that I'm really cautious and look out for in those as well. The great thing about anodizing is it fully coats the pen inside and out on all the surfaces. So whether it's the aluminum or the titanium that I did here, the whole parts get submerged. They get coated through the electrical chemical process. It is a very hard coating. It's durable. You know, I can wipe these parts down with a solvent like acetone or something like that. Don't have to worry about it coming off. Uh, but again, it's not bulletproof as evidence here with my uh, Lamy All-Star. You know, when you do drop it and chip it, the anodize can come off. And, uh, you know, you can't get uh, get the anodize back. You, you could maybe try to touch it up with some type of paint that looks close to that. But to get it back to original condition, it has to be stripped and then re-anodized. So here we have some metal pens. They're not anodized. Uh, they are painted. So whether it's a certain type of paint or a lacquer, um, you do have to be very cautious when you're painting metal. You have to prepare the surface properly. And a big red flag for me is when I see a metal pen and we're talking maybe $5, $10. Uh, I, I know there's going to be a problem. It, you just can't prepare the surfaces properly for that price point and do a proper paint job. But why is this such a big deal? Well, there's something called physics and you have to understand what's really going on here. There's something called contact angle between the droplet, whether it's paint or water or whatever, and then the surface energy of the material you're painting. You need to reduce that contact angle ideally to zero and increase the surface energy so that can happen to have a true proper bond. And that is not done by just simply wiping the part down with a solvent acetone or something like that and then painting it. That doesn't do it. You will have a like essentially a microfilm like down to a single molecule layer even if you wipe and wipe and wipe. Um, and you're not going to have a proper chemical bond. That is not the way to do it. So at these price points, if it's like five bucks, you just, you can't spend the money. You can't do the process to ensure you are obeying those rules and doing a proper paint job. And let me show you here. So this is the Amazon basics. Nothing against the pen. I mean, for this price point, 10 bucks, it is what it is what it is, but you can see already show some signs of wear here. I barely use this pen really just to do the review, tried it out for a week, played around with it. And this is chipping off already. And this is just simply from the clip. I'm barely touching it. Like maybe I'm sliding this over on and off the cover of a notebook and that's it. And it's already chipping off. Here's a pen I, I've used longer. And in the section here, so this is a lot of contact with your hand. You can see the paint is coming off over time. So again, for these price points, you just, you can't put the time and effort and care into providing a proper paint job. There are some good pens though. They're gonna cost a little bit more, but this nice little Waterman's Expert 3, it is a paint, so it's a lacquer they have on here. 
and they just did a great job. Proper surface preparation, right material, right finish, right process, and uh, now you have a really good paint job on this pen that's going to last for a long time. The next main category for materials will just use, you know, plastics, like I said. Obviously, you know, you got resins and celluloids and all sorts of different things too, but we'll just use the generic term plastics. And there's kind of two sides to that. There are plastics that you can injection mold, right? And there's other ones that have to be machined or what you know, we call it turned, okay? So injection molding is great. Whether it's a low cost pen like this little zebra pen, um, it allows you to put really great features into the pen. So they got the whole capping mechanism, all these little uh, dimples and detents and all that to have a great capping mechanism and making things easy to assemble and all that. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't really cost you more money to put those features in there versus if you have to machine a pen, there's more procedures, tooling, machine time, it's gonna drive up the price. So once you get the design, everything set, it really doesn't cost you anything more, whether you're putting in all these components to have a great snap cap, or you're putting in some really fantastic threads um, like on this Pilot 823. So you can have great overall build quality. It's repeatable, it's very accurate and uh, cost effective as well. And you know you can do this at all price points, low cost, mid cost, high cost, whatever it is. The other side of course um, are pens where you, you know the material you can injection mold it, so they're going to be what we call turned or machined. So again, the different components, the the majority of the uh, cost that goes into these pens is going to be into the material, and then of course the machining. So uh, and here this is a live in you pen, a really cool looking material. But as far as you know how this is built, it's not too crazy. You'll have a few blanks material is removed you cut some threads you got to you know deburr and a few things like that but it's not overly complex from what's going on as long as you just do a good job and everything fits together right and assembled um, you, you know especially on computer controlled machines here you know CNC mills and lathes and all that um, it, it's not hard to, to reproduce really good quality pens but most of the, the cost in these types of pens is into the material and into machining. One of the cool parts with plastic pens that you can't do with metal pens is, uh, you know, for most of the part, you can bring these pens back to a great luster if they do get damaged and scratched. So, you know, I, you watch me restore this Schaefer PFM in a previous video. I could do a fine sanding on it, give it a polish, bring it back. It looks almost like new. Had to do that on my Mont Blanc. This one here too, this Osprey pens, which is new, but you'll get some little micro scratches. I can shine this sucker up. I can't really do that with the anodize. If I, uh, you know, if it gets chipped or dinged, I can't buff it out because I'll just remove more anodize and you can't really put that back on. And same thing goes for the painted pens as well. But one advantage that these guys have is they can withstand harsher chemicals. You don't want to do that with the paint. You'll strip that off. And so if you exposed, uh, you know, solvents to these plastic pens and painted ones, you can really damage them as well. So you just got to think a little bit about what you're doing, pros and cons for each material. I went over some basics when it comes to materials. Also talked about, you know, coatings and, and surface finishes. Now we got to put these pens together, right? So we got to make sure that's done properly and we're mixing and matching materials, metals and plastics, woods and metals, and also different cap types. So we got threads, we got metal threads on plastic, metal on metal, maybe plastic on plastic. We got push caps, friction fits, all this type of stuff. How do these go together and where are some trouble areas? And I'm gonna show you how to spot some. I thought I would pick this pen. This is a Montegrappa Elmo because this is a good mix where I feel they did some stuff pretty well on this pen for the overall design and fitment and uh, mating of different materials, but also found a flaw in the same pen too. So let's go through this. So, um, you know, this is a special, I don't know if that's an acrylic or a resin they got going on here, but um, this is a turn pen. They have to remove material. And then here for the threading, we got metal threads that go into the cap here. Okay, not a big deal. If you do it right, you can do a great job. And they did a pretty good job on this. The thread uh, part here, this is a separate uh, metal part. This is made individually. You have your internal thread, external thread, and this will be then mated to this part here, most likely a, a type of glue, right? Or epoxy fitment, right? So it's in there. They did a good surface preparation. It's not coming apart. It's not spinning. The thread profile they picked on here, you can see it's not too harsh. So we actually got some decent uh, surface area because 
this will be strong, but the material you're going into isn't that strong. So if you're putting too much force in too small of an area, you can really damage the plastic. So uh, it goes in there really good. A challenge you can have when you're doing this is you can over tighten. You can just keep threading and then start stripping out threads. But what they did is the pen here is overall, it's a flush mount, right? So there's no step of the cap to go over top the body. So what that means is when you make this part, it's got a collar here. So the cap, when it tightens down, you can't go any further. The, the edge of the cap seats on that collar and that's all she wrote. If you really force it, you're either just gonna blow the material up or the epoxy will come loose and that will spin. And you really have to go way overboard in order to do that. So these threads are gonna be in a great condition for a long time. So here we are, we got metal threads into a, you know some type of plastic softer material and it's they did a great job. Here's a little area where they goofed and they didn't do such a great job. So for whatever reason, they decided to have a threaded converter in here. Now it's not the worst thing in the world. It's gonna be nice and secure, but as you can see, that's a pretty sharp, aggressive thread. And this is a very thin plastic. It's There's not much strength going on here. And you can see the wear and tear already on those threads. So I, I don't know why they needed to thread that. Not the best idea. And then here, how this goes together, there's a metal collar here that slides inside the section. And then you got your nib unit that screws into that. So um, you can just take this apart. You can screw out the uh, the nib and feed unit all in one piece. And this comes out as well, but it's not supposed to. So let's take a little closer look at these parts. Here we are zoomed in and this part is not supposed to come out. And I can tell because if you look on the surface now, this has a plating on it. So it's a, a chrome plated or whatever it is, a nickel or something to uh, stop corrosion. So that's a good idea. But you can see how it's it's removed. So there's a scratches on here and that's what they wanted to do. That You're supposed to do that, prepare the surface for bonding but I don't know if they did that on the inside very well. I don't see any marks of that whatsoever. So I don't think they prepared this surface. And the glue they did was just really in one spot and it looks like a real low end uh, adhesive. So it went in and it didn't bond worth a damn. So it just actually took just some of the coloring off with it and that's it. Now, fortunately, this isn't a catastrophic failure for the pen. Uh, these screw together and it will hold it together so it doesn't fail. But it's just interesting to see how they did some really smart stuff on the pen, but then some other things not so much of a fan of. Here's one where they just did a really bad job overall. Sorry if you recently ordered a Conklin Stylograph, but uh, what you got here is the never ending threading pen. So what they did is they have a metal threaded section here, as I showed you, that can work out okay, but we got really sharp threads, small surface area, and you can see the material on here, if this camera cares to focus. And then what we got here is this has to go into the cap, obviously, and you know, there's no liner on there, which is straight, uh, whatever type of plastic this is, it's not very strong whatsoever. And that thread profile, just doesn't give the plastic a chance to hold up against it. So it just goes in and it just keeps going and going and going and going. It kind of catches, but it just, that's it. These, these are super stripped. So really bad idea there. And also too, part of that problem is uh, there's no stop on this. And I, you know, I didn't abuse this pen. This was a pen I got early on and it just naturally over time, you just snug it and it just kept going, kept going. And then also now it's just game over. Similar to the Montegrappa Elmo is this Moon Man. Now I, I saw this pen quite pretty, uh, very similar on how it was sort of made. So we got these plastics and then same thing for the threads. We got a metal thread unit here and it's machined as well and it's put in, but this is where price point really shows up. So if we zoom in again, we've got an external thread, we've got an internal thread, but you can see all those little fine marks inside there. There's just a lot of chatter on this part when it's being made. Um, also, you can see for the thread here, um, we're just actually missing some portions of it. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but we actually, they will not, we, they, right there, you can see that there, that's metal just missing. So it blew through the wall thickness on that insert and there's just no metal left there anymore. So not a very good job on there. And uh, same challenge we have here is you can over thread. So there's no collar. This, the cap goes over top the body so you can go ahead and strip it. Use this pen for a couple days and I was not happy with it. So this is a very low mileage pen. 
and I looked at the thread and it's already seriously mashed so bad actually I can just start pulling the thread out like that's <laughs> you shouldn't be able to just take your fingernail and pull out bits of thread on a pen. So, now a big thing when you design a pen like this, everything has to get fitted together properly. And so you have a bit of a challenge here because you have all these parts that kind of want to be concentric. When you put a, a screw into a threaded hole, they should be concentric or else you're gonna have a real tough time doing that. So um, this external thread wants to be concentric with the thread in the cap, okay? Then this internal thread wants to be concentric with these. And then all these threaded parts are being bonded into these other parts. Um, so we have a lot of center points and we have to ensure that when these are being assembled, that we have proper alignment jigs so everything can be aligned and you get good fitment. Um, that's not happening here and so what you just do is you just have pretty sloppy threads to make up for that misfitment and uh, you end up just not having an overall good fit and finish on a pen. So at all sorts of price points and various manufacturers there's going to be pens that were done excellent and some where there was a few little misses. So for example on this Visconti Rembrandt I like the pen it's got this magnetic cap not too shabby there is a bit of a issue with the part of the in and in liner and the cap catching on there and it might not seat properly you got to give it a wiggle but not the end of the world but it didn't take long for this cap band to start to wiggle and then eventually fall off and when i looked at the parts on here they just weren't prepared properly so um again the surfaces weren't prepared so i actually had to just go ahead myself prepare them properly sand them put on some proper two-part epoxy and now that sucker is on there. Uh, I found a bit of an issue again with varying materials on this Leonardo Memento Zero. Beautiful pen, like fairly well constructed. Everything goes together quite nice. All this is really great until I came to the blind cap. So here again we have metal and this plastic. Now that doesn't have to be a problem but if we can zoom in and you see all this lovely dust on here, um, yeah, it's it's chewing this up. So a bit of a miss on there. They, it does stop, so you can't go down too far. Once it's seated, it's seated. You can't over torque, over tighten it and start really stripping stuff out. But the big part was just the, uh, the thread profile and the pitch on here. It's just not appropriate for these mating surfaces. So for this pen, if you got one of these, it's a good pen, but I don't like to use the blind cap. I think the only time I use the blind cap is if I make a video uh, to kind of point things out like that. So I just unscrew it like a regular pen, fill it that way and away we go. And it seems cap bands is just a common area to have an issue like I showed you on the Visconti. So here's one where uh, it just spin around. And now some of them get put on there and they're crimped on there. So the, the things won't budge or they're just done with proper adhesives and, and preparation. But again, it's it, you don't have to go too far to find problems. So here is a uh, fountain pen revolution Himalaya and you can just hold that cap band and the sucker spins. Probably shouldn't be doing that. This uh, Noodler's Ahab, it's not too bad, but I think it will get worse over time. I grab it, I can spin it. We got a little bit of wiggle on there too. So just something to keep in mind. And when I look at stuff online, I look at all these little details and think, sometimes you can't see it from the pictures. Like if you can see it in person, you can maybe pick on it, up on it. But these are just things I think about. I wonder, well, did they do a good job in surface preparation? Can I zoom in on the picture? Can I see little details? Was it crimped or is that glued? And then I try to make my assessment on if that's going to be a problem or not. So now moving on to cap types, we got threaded caps. I'll do pop caps next. Now uh, for threaded caps, there's really two ways. Either it's injection molded, like on this little Caveco. So you can make beautiful threads very economically. It doesn't take any time. It just happens magically when you make the pen and they come out absolutely wonderfully or you're gonna to have to cut it into the material, whether it's like a resin, uh, an ebonite, or if you got metal pens as well. Now, when it comes to threads, you can have what they call a single start thread. So there's one starting point in the thread, or like say on this Pelican, this is what they call a four start thread. So on here, it's again, maybe I should have picked a better contrasting pen, but when you zoom in really close, let's see if we can pick this up a little bit here. Um, you can see where the thread starts. So let's find a spot right here. So a thread starts here. There's four points around this pen where it does that. So every 90 degrees, there's another one. 
there's another one, and there's another one. So there's four starting points on that thread. What it does is it, it you know, you can have a kind of a faster threading pen, but you also have a lot of engagement of thread, so it's nice and secure. This is also done in Ranga pen, so this is, um, you know, less than a turn, about three quarter turn, and this is a two start thread, and they have a nice uh, pitch angle on there, so it's a rapid open, rapid close pen. So that's a great uh, thread on that pen. And even this little Jin, how I reviewed this recently, I don't know, it's like a two and a half dollar pen. Um, Three thread, uh, sorry, three turns for me is a little bit much, but uh, again, low price point, injection molded, great threads, and instead of metal on metal, they actually have an insert on here this time, so that's going to help with longevity. Although they did go to plastic on metal in here, and again, you can see that residue, so they almost had it. Uh, but not quite. Now with metal pens, of course, they're going to have to get machined. They're going to have to get turned into the parts. We got this little Enso, you know, quick open, quick close little pen. Pretty good job on here. One nice thing with these pens is so it's anodized. Now the anodize actually helps with thread uh, longevity. Uh, when you have like materials and they go to thread, you can get, they can kind of bind up and uh, get a little bit smushed up. That's what we call that galling. Um, so the anodizing can help with that. Now one thing, a little bit over time, you can see here that will just kind of wear a little bit, especially on the inside, you can see it there. Now that doesn't detract from the pen, it still looks beautiful. I will get other scratches on the pen at some point, but just one little thing to think about as well. But on the Fabric Castell, so this is a black anodized aluminum pen as well. But what they actually did here is uh, going to require me to zoom, but there's an insert in here as well. So here we are zoomed in on the fabric castell. So it's actually not metal on metal or coating on coating in this case, but there's a uh, part of the cap liner is they chose to use threads on there. Now you could be a uh, danger zone there by potentially stripping out those threads, but they weighed the designed, uh, the cap and the threads and all the, the relief here, especially against the shoulder. You can't over torque it. So that's all she wrote. That's all it goes. So you're not going to strip that thread out, which is a really cool feature on this pen as well. We're going to zoom back in. I'm going to have to show you another feature. So this will be hard to see on online pictures, I guess. But so this is just something you got to kind of be aware of. That's why I'm doing this video. So this, again, this is a two start thread. So that's great. Now, when you cut the thread, if we can get some type of focus, um, the thread will go all the way down to the edge of, ma of the material. Okay, and it's it's kind of narrows in and you get a fine point at the edge of it. And so that can be a bit of a challenge when you start a thread on that narrow uh, taper as it goes. It can sort of get rounded over, it can flip flop, it can sometimes cause a bit of a cross threading situation. So they were aware of that and what they did, if we can see this, see how, if we can, let me zoom in a little bit more, you can see how there actually used to be more thread on the pen. So just look in front of that and you can see this little trace that goes down that is no longer there. So that thread was cut and you can see, you know, you can see it. It was removed, right? So that started all the way right about here and they removed that part of the material until we had like a nice full width of the thread. And then even on the side profile, if you can see that's angled up, they chamfered that. So when this pen threads, you're getting a nice full width thread it's not tapered at the start and it's uh they angled that up on there they put a chamfer on there so really nice thread we're not going to mash up the other mating material and you get a nice solid contact point so that is a really uh, great detail and consideration on that and now if we look at the inside thread so where the section threads into the body we can see they didn't actually anodize that part um, so that when these parts mate, we're not going to be stripping off that surface as well. And we're also not going to have binding with it too. So they really went all out on their threads on this little fabric Castell uh, emotion. So this is kind of the reason this was in my top three pens. Now we got snap caps, pop caps, friction caps. Uh, there's a few different ways that they do it. So one of the most common ways on these pens, and there's a few different profiles, but they'll have something either further back or further at the front, like on this Waterman, where they'll have like a little ramp up. And what that'll do is that will fit internally into a cap liner, or what's easy to, easier to see here is on this Zebra pen, uh, you know, they have this depression, they got this ramp up here, and they got some dimples back here. So it goes over top, applies some force, there's a little bit of deformation, 
and then finally it snaps and drives it home and makes it nice and secure. So there's lots of pens that use that method. This little Jin Hao as well, you can see here, it's right at the end. And then on the inside here, there'll either be some little dimples or step in of uh, internal diameter. So now it grabs that and captures that and holds the pen in place. So that's a very popular method, works really well. Another one is, uh, you know, really popular here on the Parker 51. So you have this metal ring here, and then you got some uh, tension bars, essentially. You got some spring steel here. It's almost like in a little crown that they that they get slid slid into there. But you have some little uh, pr pressure bars, tension bars that go in there that they're going to engage over top of this ring to give a nice friction fit. But they are springy, so we're not grinding. Something is yielding. Those are giving way but applying a force on here to secure it. Now, some other pens, like I got this Russian one and this North Korean pen, um, they have that, but the contact point is the plastic, the super soft El Cheapo plastic. So uh, inevitably what happens is it just scratches it pretty bad. So even on this Russian pen, I like this pen, but yeah, that was a bit of a swing and a miss. Uh, all the scratching happens there on the section of the body. Now I went all in deep on the Lamy 2000 build and how that's done, but they have a very innovative way they did it. They just have this little uh, ring in here that's springy. It's essentially like a retaining ring for a bearing is essentially what the concept is here. But these little ears will compress and give way to some nice tight controls on some internal diameters onto some grooves that are there. So this will go in. We're not trying to scratch or deform or go metal on metal and push uh, away into each other. These will squeeze lightly into the pen and then they'll expand again once they get into that uh, diameter that's in there that's going to allow them to open up and you get this nice satisfying snap. And like I pointed out before, you can't over jam it. So you can't push harder, harder, harder. It doesn't let you over uh, cap it, I guess you could say. Now on this little Schaefer PFM, it has a similar type idea, but it's really just to press against the inner cap. So it works okay, not as well. And then on this vintage Aurora 88, beautiful pen. I think this is really just a gorgeous looking pen. But, you know, they got that ring there and it's really just scratching against the uh, inside of the cap. So uh, a bit of a miss on that one. I know some folks have them and they're in great condition and the fit is nicer, but it is a bit of a I don't care for that design feature where you're just scratching metal on metal. It's going to wear over time. Now, I love the thread job they did on the Faber-Castell Emotion. This is the Andoro, and so we got wood, we got metal, beautiful, cool-looking pen, and it's a snap cap as well, but all the snap cap business happens with this little collar. Now, I haven't had a problem, but I am a little uh, weary of it as just the profile, it's a pretty steep step up, and uh, also the plastic, it just, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point down the road that could potentially chip. So I think that could have just been revisited a little bit more. It does work, but uh, I see that as a potential failure point. Let me know in the comments if that's happened to you or know someone that has. So one thing we all want to avoid, of course, is just a flat out terrible pen. And I'm going to give you what I call the terrible pen of 2021 so far. If we could, folk, this is the most terrible camera of 2021. Uh, this is the most terrible pen. This is the Lambitu 3088. So this is the ripoff of the Platinum Caritas. Uh, I did a review and I think I was just in a fantastically chipper mood that night. Um, cause I really should have been much more harsh on this to just to get the clicking mechanism to work. I had to like sand and, and do some work on those parts. I've heard some people after just a few clicks, the thing jams up, um, construction. I mean, it looks pretty, but don't let that fool you. One tenth the price of this versus the proper one is one tenth the quality. And the piece de resistance we got here is the amount of nib dry up you get and Look at those ink boogers. I have never seen something that bad in my life. It is like some new organic life form growing on this pen. Don't know if that helped, but just wanted to point out some of the things that I try to look at and I'll zoom in on the pictures and see if I can pick that up online or when I go to a pen shop to help me determine if it is a well-made pen. Obviously, afterwards, I want to look to see, is it pretty and look good? And then what nib does it have? Am I going to like that or the filling system? But 
To me, all of that is secondary if it's not built properly. I would rather fix a misadjustment in tines, which might take 30 seconds or five minutes if you're slow. But if there is an inherent problem with an overall build of a pen, uh, it doesn't matter how good or how bad the nib is. So again, questions, comments, like, subscribes are always welcome. There's no shortage of pens now and materials. There's all sorts of kinds. And I went through a bunch here. I got pens everywhere. So hoping this will help your uh, holiday shopping season. Hope you find some good deals. Here's to hoping you get a good pen and we will catch you next time.